Internet, what's happening? I'm Steve from GraphicDesignerTips.com, and in today's episode, I'm excited to talk to you about a really cool logo for Assassin's Creed 3. Uh, it's a game that just came out, which uh, I've been too busy to play. I don't even have it, but I'm eventually going to get it because uh, it has an awesome theme revolving around it, which is the American Revolution, uh, which I'm really into. Um, this is an Adobe Illustrator tutorial I'm building in CS6 right now. So whatever program you're actually building in, um, this is going to apply to any other really Illustrator uh, creative suite. So CS2 and up, you'll be fine. Um, so what we're going to do is real quick, this is the actual poster art over here. And this is the same poster art, but I made it a little bit higher because this tutorial I'm going to recreate this logo and put it in the top here now if you're wondering you know this is their standalone symbol and then they have their words Assassin's Creed 3 if you're wondering why they didn't put the symbol in I'll tell you why the art is the, the art is so busy right now and it needs to be because it's really gonna sell the game it's really gonna sell you know the whole feeling of the game if I was to create this logo with the actual symbol behind it do you see how high I'd have to make it the top half, the top 40% of this piece over here on the right is just the logo and the bottom 60% is the is the image. You don't want anything getting taken away from that image. Um, it works well over here without the standalone logo, but it's just it's just a thought process thing, uh, you know, thinking on how to build things. Trust me, this image is so cluttered because there's so many things going on, but you don't want to clutter it even more with more empty space and more uh, other stuff going on up here. But we're gonna build this logo anyway, and you know, just so you learn some things. Uh, this is more than than just learning about the logo itself, the Assassin's Creed woo logo. It's more about building it and understanding how to to do little things in Illustrator. So, let's get on with it. We're gonna move this standalone logo, which we're gonna design first, and then we're gonna do the text later. All right, I'm gonna lock this by hitting Command Two or Object Lock Selection. All right, we're gonna come up here to the pen tool. We're gonna do this real quick. We're gonna click the top. All right. And now, if you're wondering why I'm not just going around every curve through my whole entire piece, I mean, some of them I will, but you'll see why in a second, because I'm gonna introduce you to an awesome tool that uh, if you don't know it, it's really gonna change things for you. And that's what I wanna do for you guys. Uh, I'm only making half of this, then we're going to mirror it. Basically, there's a tool in here, if you click the pen, all right, and it's called Convert Anchor Point Tool, and it's actually Shift and then the letter C. It's a little tool that looks like this, upside down V. If we click in the center point, you're going to see, ah, how nice is that? It creates that little curve for you, and you're able to pull it left, right, and do whatever you want with it. So we're going to mirror that exact curve, right, just like that. Watch how simple this is. One, two. Now this is what you want to do when you have complex um, clipping masks going on. So now in this one, it didn't really work out, but that's okay because we're going to hit the letter A and that's for the direct selection tool. We can click it up here also and we're going to click that one anchor point and we're going to pull it down. It's not interfering with the other one. It is a little sensitive. It will do that. So just be careful. All right, cool. Now we got that one. Uh, we're going to fill that with a different color so you can see it. We're going to fill it with this magenta right here. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to hold Option, click, and we're going to move this to the right and, and, and hold Shift uh, with one of your other fingers at the same time and it, so it won't go all over the place. Shift will hold it in line and then let go. It makes a copy. Option, Option click drag is the best thing you can start to do for yourself because it's going to make copies of things uh, exactly the elements that you have. So um, we're going to come up here to the reflection tool, which is also O on the keyboard, and we're going to click. We're going to hold shift because then it's going to do all this wacky crap. And shift, it's going to flip it over as you move your mouse. And like so, we're going to move this right on top of here. Awesome. Now, Say I wanted to do a um, a gradient, okay? And I did a gradient just like that. If I click gradient, you're gonna notice, okay, it's going from, I'll throw another color in here just to differentiate that. All right, cool. It goes from green to black. Now, 
if you notice, this element's going from green to black, and this element's going to green from green to black. We don't want that. We want it to be uh, seamless throughout the whole thing. And the reason it's doing that is because it's seeing it as two different shapes. Let's move this bad boy over here, and we're going to select both of these shapes, and we're going to come into our Pathfinder and hit Unite. All right? And that's going to make it one shape. All right? It was two shapes. Now it's one. And if you see, it seamlessly goes from green to black at the end. So now that it's one shape, and obviously we don't want it to be green, we're going to come over to the eyedropper tool. You see, guys, you're learning all these little tools here. So uh, there's a lot that goes on to, into a logo design. It's uh, You're going to click this eyedropper, and you're going to select that blue. All right, let's overlay that. Yep. All right, now we're going to come up to the star tool. We're going to create these three little stars right here. And if you notice, the star that I'm making is a little bit fatter. We're also doing the option shift click to move it, just like before. And the way that you change the star, and I want to be on this tutorial all night. So you would come to the star tool. You would just click. And then it says radius 1, radius 2. Now let's play around real quick. We'll do a radius. This is going to be a really skinny star. And we'll leave five points on it. And we're going to hit OK. All right, so the more you play around with this, I mean, this can be really cool if you're trying to make like um you put like a Gaussian blur behind this and it kind of looks like a shiny element, you know, something like that. Uh, you know, like a star, like when a flash hits your eye or something like that. So now we're going to create this bottom element and this is going to be really simple the way we're going to create this. Um, people might comment and say there's other ways to do this, which there are many, but this is the way I do it because it's fast and easy. You're going to click a point, click the other end point, and we're going to click and don't let go. We're going to drag, oh, there goes my canvas, but that's okay. We're going to make that shape right there. And we're going to turn this orange, all right, so you can see what's going on here. And I'm going to outline that so I could see what's behind it. And right in the middle here, I'm going to hit the plus sign on my keyboard, which turns into the add and anchor point, which is also up here under the pen tool. See, remember the sh keyboard shortcuts are awesome too, guys. You, you need to learn them. And girls, excuse me. Um, we're going to pull that point out to the edge where it should be. And now with the direct selection, we're just going to move one side at a time until we get it to where we want it to be. We're going to move this point up here. I have another tutorial on p the pen tool and making selections that you definitely need to check out. It'll definitely help you out with this if you are a little confused right now. All right. So I'm going to take this stroke off. The shape is still there. It's uh, this shape right here in orange again. But we're going to kind of just leave it alone for a second. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to draw this little shape right here. All right. And I am doing the curves this time just because I want to kind of plow through this. It's a quick and easy shape. shape. And I'm going to fill this with green just so you can see it, you know, this point of the tutorial. And let's find this back shape that I made. And we're going to put that orange again. But we're going to fill it in the middle. Now, I would assume that this shape is it, it looks very uniform. So we're going to flip this over. All right. And we're going to move it. Because if you look at the shape behind it, we're cutting out that same white area. All right. OK. Um, we're going to move these three elements down below. So it's out of our way. And we're going to click the green. And we're going to, both of them, by holding shift to select both, we're going to hit object, arrange, send to back. Now, one at a time, we're going to take the green and we're going to hold the orange and, excuse me, click the orange and go to our pathfinder and hit minus back. Same thing on the right, we're going to minus back. And the last thing, hit A, it's going to be our direct selection. We're going to delete that bad boy right there. We're going to select our piece, come up here to the eyedropper tool and select that blue. So we just use the Pathfinder to knock out some elements, and we use our eyedropper again to select the color. So um, that's the main part of the shape, aside from the actual Roman numeral three, and we're going to do that in a minute. But uh, let's jump into our typography next. Now, I do know what this font is. I knew it right as I saw the, you know, as as you design for years, you'll start to see things, uh, and you'll be like, oh, I know that font. It's really cool. But this is a front font the heck is a front? I have no idea. Um, Trojan or Trahan, whatever you call it, Pro uh, is the font we're going to use. And I'm going to type in the word Assassins. 
all right? And we're going to come up to our font called Trajan, T-R-A-G-A-N, however the hell you say it, Trajan Pro. Okay, we're gonna make that bad boy bigger. Now you're gonna notice one thing that's a little bit different, and I'll tell you why, because Trajan has, whatever, has different, um, different uh, instances of the actual font. So this one is more rounded. If you look, look at the S's and look at the top of the A. Let's look at the actual artwork. The S and the A are crisp. Now I don't believe this person did this every single letter uh, and wasted their time on this, the, the creative director for this game. There's a Roman version of this font and I believe it's gonna look exactly like that. So I don't have that. It's not a standard font on my computer. I could find it, but for the purpose of this tutorial, this is close enough. All right, so we're going to lock this element so we don't move it by hitting what? Command two, or coming up to object lock selection. So now we can't move that. We're gonna overlay the words, assassins, and you can't see them, so we're gonna put it in uh, put it in a light blue. Okay, cool. All right, we're going to make the height of the letters correct. Oh, oh, actually, let me back up here one second, excuse me. We got to do the A and the S separate. So we're going to do the A first because it's on a different plane and it's definitely a different text box than the rest. And you can already see the differences in the font. Um, the bar is much higher on the other version. But uh, I know if you type, if you search for Trahan Roman, it's going to come up with what you want. So we're going to come up to the S. And, uh, oh, well, let's bold this font, too. That's a pretty good idea. What do you think about that? Boom. All right. So we're going to overlay the words. And I'm not a fan of stretching type at all, but I'm going to have to do it in this case. Um... If you come in between a letter, if you notice that S is not lining up with anything, we can come in here with the cursor, hit option, and we're going to, or oh, what's option on the PC, I'm not sure, uh, maybe alt. It's, uh, and just nudge it over using an arrow, okay? We're going to do the same thing with the S, nudge it back, nudge the I back, and definitely nudge that N back. All right, cool. Don't worry about the apostrophe for right now. You know the deal with the font. And we're going to... Copy that A over by hitting Option, just like before. S, capital S, boom, Assassins. All right, we're gonna group that entire word. So now when we select it, it's one thing. And the way that we do that is with all the, with all the elements selected, one by one, you're gonna come to Object Group, Command G, and let's overlay that object. And now we're gonna change it to blue by sampling the blue, okay? At this point, I think you guys kind of get the drift, so just follow me for a second. I'm gonna do this with Creed. I'm not talking about the band, which is one of my favorites. Uh, all right, let's do this. All right, now the way we're gonna get this, I mean, instead of making five text boxes and just moving everything over, we're going to add to this, we're gonna add some tracking. And we're gonna come into tracking and we're gonna do 200, it's not enough. Uh, we're going to add a lot more. And you're gonna notice tracking is adding space after the letter. That's why even after the D, you notice there's tons of space there. Now, you can take that space off, because uh, it will throw off, you know, everybody who does selects things and hits align, they think it's, it's gonna make everything align. It's not gonna make everything align because this word creed is actually, it's it's reading it as if the word is this long, not to the end of the D. So the way that you would fix that real quick, and I, and I know I'm going into a lot of things here, and, and you might be like, oh, you know, get to the point, but this is really important stuff, especially if you're going to do this as a career. So um, you're going to hold option, and you're going to hit the back arrow, and it's going to take that tracking off of that letter only. So when I hit the escape, it just selects the word from the beginning of the C to the end of the D. It's exactly what you wanted, all right? Uh, we're gonna come in here to the line segment tool next, and we're going to create a line there, and we're going to sample that blue, because that's what it is, and we're going to option, 
select move that bad boy over so it's on the right now and the last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create this Roman numeral three by making three eyes okay now if you remember a second ago that that option backspace deal where it removed the tracking that's what you're gonna want to do here you notice how the letters are practically touching each other uh, we're gonna hit option and hit back all right we're gonna hit option back voila and I mean they look a little bit close but then again that fonts different it's it's more pointy the ends we're going to make that a little bit larger and we're going to sample that red okay which is too light because here we go all right there we go okay so now we got that we're going to take our logo now these are all separate elements so let's group this we're going to move it over and it's not large enough we're gonna to have to actually make that larger okay now if if you're comfortable using layers you could use layers for this I'm just kinda of moving things sending them to the back so we're gonna take this whole deal and we're gonna send it to the back object arrange sent to back and we're gonna transparency come over here and hit that about 10 percent and now I'm going to unlock that object in the back by going to object unlock all gonna hit delete and there is our logo if we hit command a we're gonna see here is all of our elements here's the the word that word and it's pretty cool their logo I just want to show you something that you know as a from a creative standpoint how the C and the D kind of fall within that little pocket right here I really like that and that's an element that you know nobody's gonna give a crap about but when you look at it from a design standpoint somebody really put a lot of thought into it it's the little things that matter in the end it that you know this effect is not gonna sell more video games it's just gonna you know it's it's gonna lead to cleaner design and uh, as a graphic artist if you're looking to get work you know people will notice the clean and uh, you know good feeling especially agencies that might want to freelance have you freelance or, or sub out to you so they're gonna notice all these little things so um, last thing last very very last thing I know I said that three or four times already we're gonna select all the elements hit command G to group them as one so we move it it moves as one family right there we're going to put it right over our artwork on our artwork and voila how do you like me now all right that is Assassin's Creed logo design 101 I hope you guys uh, got something out of this definitely like our video and uh, share it out um, don't forget to subscribe to our videos I'm gonna be doing I've been doing a lot of these but I'm, I'm more focusing on logo design now because it's something I love to do it's uh, it's my favorite aspect of design it's the most challenging and uh, I just really like seeing how other people or designers in the world are doing things so uh, definitely comment guys and I thank you very much for taking the time to listen to my ramble and I really hope you learned something and have a great night peace